Hey guys, it's uh, Saturday. We're ready to do a recap on what we've studied. Now, this study has gone on for like three weeks, but we're only going to recap what we've talked about this week, okay? And our reference scripture comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 17. It says, Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall be with the Lord, always be with the Lord. So there's coming a time that Jesus is coming back for his church. And my question for you is, are you ready? Are you so distracted with the things of this earth? I mean, sometimes I wonder, especially women, if, if Christ returned right now, I believe there are some that would say, well, Jesus, I'll be with you in a minute, but let me go take care of my horses. You know, that isn't going to work. We need to be ready. When he calls us, it's, it says that in a twinkling of an eye, we're going to be caught up together with him. So I hope that you're ready. And we've talked about this over the last three weeks. But again, this week we started with store up. And um, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 14 says, wise people store up knowledge. Are you storing up the knowledge? And is the knowledge that you're storing up good knowledge? The Bible talks about in uh, uh, um, Proverbs chapter 4, it tells us that, um, that we're to, to use wisdom and we're to, uh, and in fact, it says that wisdom is the principal thing. Now, knowledge and wisdom is a little bit different. Uh, knowledge is an accumulation of facts. Wisdom is taking those facts and put them in, into operation in our life. So when Jesus says, love your enemies, you can argue with that all you want to, but here's the knowledge, love your en enemies, and here's the wisdom, apply it to your life, amen. So um, also in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, it says, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in. See, we need to be focused on heaven. We need to lay up our treasures for heaven so that we hear him say one day, well done, my good and faithful servant. And then we said we need to lift up or reach up. When we even look at Jesus, many times it says, and he lifted up his, his eyes to heaven, to the Father. And we need to lift up our eyes and our hearts and our minds towards him. Psalm chapter 25, verse 1 says, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My mind, will, and emotions, I lift those up to you. Psalm 28 verse 2 says, Hear the voice of my supplication when I cry to you, when I lift up my hands towards your holy sanctuary. Now, praise, the word praise itself is yada, and it means and it speaks of a lifting of our hands. That's actually praise. Many people don't even practice that, and yet we should do. We should lift up our hands to the Lord and lift up our eyes, lift up our hearts, and lift up our minds to him. Um, uh, Psalm 123 verse 1 says unto you I lift up my eyes O you who dwell in the heavens and then Matthew 16 24 says if anyone desires to come after me let him deny himself and take up or lift up his cross and we need to do that also we talked about that this week after that we, we talked about make up or give up and uh, we need to um, make up with those that we've wronged or have wronged us, and we need to give up any bitterness or unforgiveness that we might have. The Bible says in Mark eleven twenty five verse and 26, it says, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Watch this, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. That is a cowboy no-brainer. We need to forgive. It also tells us in Matthew 5, 23 and 24, therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, if you're making a sacrifice to God, and there, and there you remember your brother has something against you, leave your gift there at the altar and go away. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. That's very important. We need to make things right so we can have relationships with people and share the love of Christ. And finally, it says that we're to love our enemies, bless those who curse us, uh, do good to those who hate us, and forgive the unforgivable. Amen. Uh, and then after that, we said, and then don't be, uh, uh, don't put up. Now, again, this is a don't here. Don't put up. In uh, 2 Corinthians eleven four, it says, For he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, 
or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. We cannot put up with false teachers and antichrist. The end times, it even says that there are going to be more and more of that that takes place. So we need to know our scripture. We need to have knowledge of the scripture. And then we need not to be uh, to put up with people preaching the wrong things and trying to teach us and deceive us. And then finally, yesterday we talked about don't be puffed up. Don't be puffed up. We found out that knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. And we also found out in 1 Corinthians 13, 4, it says, and uh, love is not puffed up. So we need to operate in love. What love do we operate in? It's the love of God. It's agape love that is unconditional, unconditional and sacrificial. Well, listen, go to church tomorrow and fellowship with other believers. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.